Welcome back to This Week. I'm pleased to be joined by Democratic House member and caucus chair John Ray Clemens of Nashville. Nice to see you, sir. Thanks for having me. Here it goes. The session starts a little early this year, beginning next week. I want your thoughts based on last year, which was very traumatic for everybody. You know, anger on the floor, expulsion of members. We had the tragedy of the Covenant shooting, call for gun reform, a call for a special session. It happened, but nothing really got accomplished. With that as the backdrop, going into this new session in an election year, what do you, what do you expect to have happen? Well, yeah, there's no predicting what can happen in the state legislature these days. What I do know is that Tennesseans, you know, they just want to live their lives. They don't want to have to worry about what the state legislature may or may not do on any given day or what crazy legislation or unconstitutional legislation we may or may not pass. They know what the issues are affecting their family and the challenges they're facing every day, and they rightfully expect their state legislature to address those issues. And that's what we should be doing, and so that's what I hope we will be doing this upcoming session. A lot of issues, controversial issues on the table, whether they get debated, whether they get acted on or not, we'll see. I think the one issue that uh, the Republicans are going to be pushing for, some in the Republicans, anyway, the governor's office especially, is expanding the school voucher program statewide. There is opposition on the Republican side from some, especially in some of these rural counties that don't have private schools and don't want the tax dollars taken away from public schools. Making a guess that Republicans obviously have a supermajority. If they convince enough folks, they can get this passed. But there is opposition here. Yeah, well, let's be, uh, let's be honest. This is a scam. The vouchers are a scam. Anyone, regardless of party, who truly cares about their local public schools is opposed to this voucher plan. And so that's, we, we, we are finding uh, aid across the aisle. Democrats overwhelmingly object to this scam, and, and we're finding a lot of Republicans, like you said, who oppose it as well for various reasons, whether they have um, private schools in their county or not, everybody is really concerned and overwhelmingly supports their public schools. So if you care about your local public school, your neighborhood public school, then you are opposed to this voucher scam. How much of a concern is there in regards to the push to have some of these charter schools coming in with, with the curriculum established by Hillsdale College of Faith-Based University? Yes, yeah, so the, the charter schools are a whole other issue. So you've got these charter schools, you know, and we, they have set up, a, you know, that scheme as well to direct more public funding into private entities and these privatized charter schools, and they have these ideological bent to them. And so, you know, there's a lot of concern there on multiple fronts. But look, the charter schools and the voucher scam combined, in addition to everything else that has been done purposefully to undermine our public schools is, is really concerning. And every Tennessean should be really concerned about what this GOP supermajority and Governor Bill Lee are doing to our beloved public schools. Polls repeatedly show over and over again support for medical marijuana in Tennessee, mm -hmm. for common sense gun reform in Tennessee, for red flag laws. So far that has not happened. It looks like again this year there will be a push for medical marijuana in Tennessee. There seems to be a little bit of movement in regard to having that happen. The lieutenant governor still wants it uh, changed federally before he votes for it. What, what are your thoughts as we try once again for medical marijuana in Tennessee? Well, you just outlined uh, several things uh, demonstrating how out of touch this supermajority and this governor is with the state of Tennessee. Voters want certain things accomplished and, and they're just not getting done. And, and that's a failure of leadership. And right now, and I've said this for years, there is only, I can count on one hand, the amount of people in the state legislature who are completely holding up the legalization of cannabis. Most of them are in the state Senate. One is in the, in, in the state house. But that's it. Once we can overcome those few votes, we will have legalized cannabis in this state, and it'll be a win-win-win for everybody from a revenue standpoint, from a family farm standpoint, to empowering local communities and, and rural communities. Uh, look, everybody would win from this, and Tennessee, again, is behind the curve on this issue. Same issue regarding some of the folks who have been receiving long prison sentences for small amounts of marijuana, marijuana yeah. convictions. There was a plan, a point at one point where it looked like that was going to be examined. Maybe some of these cha uh, charges or uh, sentences reduced. That hasn't happened. No, a lot of the promises that Governor Bill Lee made when he was running for re-election, a lot of the criminal justice reform right. promises that we all heard and some people voted for him because of those, they just haven't come to fruition. He hasn't put his back into them and he really hasn't put his mouth where, you know, or the actions where his mouth were. Any ideas in regards to moving forward with some kind of judicial reform this legislative session? 
Well, we'll see. I, I've not heard much about it, but um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens in the coming weeks. Our conversation with National Democratic State Representative John Ray Clemens continues when this week continues in a moment. Welcome back to this week and my conversation with Nashville State Democratic uh, Representative John Ray Clemens of Nashville. You were on the floor, emotional, as, as many folks were when the Covenant School shooting happened, a terrible, terrible tragedy for this community. And some parents, with their hearts in their hands, went to the legislature hoping for some kind of action to make the school, make the state safer. They begged the governor. The governor finally acquiesced and called a special legislative session on public safety, but nothing got done. It was, it was halted by the Senate when they decided not to move any legislation forward. You could see the anger in the parents. I think they didn't expect to see the wheels of justice kind of just come to a complete halt. Now that they know the system, is there an effort? Can anything move forward? I know a Tennessee, to be realistic, we're not going to get gun reform, but there, there's a way to make some of this stuff happen in regards to uh, access or more mental health laws or something to help this, the problem become less of a problem in Tennessee. Yeah, so we've been pushing for this for years. I mean, you know, public safety is one of our top priorities in the Democratic caucus. And, you know, in, in the Antioch shootings, it was right. been over five years ago in my district in Antioch. And, and, you know, nothing was done following that. And then last year, of course, we had that other unspeakable tragedy that led to, to a, a, a bigger movement. And, and unfortunately, you know, those parents have been become very frustrated with the system as right. they've discovered it. But we're going to continue to reach across the aisle. Look, it may not be big steps, but if we can take any small steps to better protecting our children and our communities from gun violence, that's a win. And we need to build on those small steps. And look, the people of Tennessee, again, expect us to do something. So the question is, are we going to listen to the people who elect us to office and the people we represent and have a duty to protect? Or are we going to live in fear of some you know, gun lobby out there who, who is just opposed to everything? Polls also show people want exemptions to Tennessee's near total abortion ban. Uh, there's going to be movement for that forward. There's at least one Republican pushing for. He's also a doctor. Any thought that this is a possibility where some kind of exceptions for the life of the mother, for rape, incest could pass in this state? Well, there certainly should be. I mean, we have some of the most draconian laws in the country when it comes to reproductive health care rights. And, and unfortunately, women in the state of Tennessee right now are treated as less than equal. And we need to take steps. The, we passed a small measure mm -hmm. last year. Unfortunately, it, it created more ambiguity for doctors, leaving health care providers to make legal decisions rather than health care decisions with their patients. And we need to restore those freedoms to women across the state of Tennessee. This law is resulting in doctors leaving the state. OBGYNs not wanting to practice in Tennessee for fear of being prosecuted. Well, uh, we're seeing health care facilities having trouble recruiting new talent to the state. People to medical schools are having trouble recruiting students. So anytime you have laws as restrictive as this, preventing someone from being able to do their job that they take an oath to do, um, you know, that, that's really concerning and none of us benefit. It hurts our economies. It hurts our access to health care. And of course, this all comes back to the fundamental freedom of, of women. State Representative John Ray Clemens, appreciate your time and your insight, and good luck at the legislature as the session begins next week. Thank you. Stay with us. This week continues in a moment. And thanks for spending part of the first weekend of 2024 with us. That will do it for another edition of this week. The state legislature convenes next week. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of stories from that. I want to thank my guest, House uh, Democratic House Caucus Chair John Ray Clemens, and we hope to see you back here next weekend for another edition of this week. Between now and then, you have a great week.